Hello everybody and welcome back to Path to Platinum, the series where I show you how to best get all trophies you could ever hope for. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new and improved Resident Evil 3, although apparently I'm in the minority of people who think that about this game. This game has a pretty easy trophy list with the exception of one highly skill based trophy, but that's what I'm here for, right? So no worries there. However, before I talk more about that, I'd just like to say, if you guys enjoy this video or it helped you out, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like, subscribe, and go ahead and hit that notification bell. It would really help me out to help my channel grow. Also, if you guys are interested, I trophy hunt on the fly during my live streams, which take place every week. So if that sort of thing interests you, consider stopping by to check it out. But if not, no worries there, no harm done. Now that I've said my piece, we can go ahead and dive straight into the video. So without further delay, let's get underway. Now before we get into the collectibles, first I want to talk about something very important that you should do, and that's going to be strategically placed saves. Now, to be more specific, you're going to want to make saves at very specific times during the game, and the reason for this is because there are certain points in the game that can be used very efficiently for grinding your weapon kills. Weapon kills, you may ask? What the fuck are you on about, Matt? Well, I'll tell you. You see, there's this nifty bonus shop that you unlock once you beat the game, and it's got quite a few things for sale that you're going to need in order to make getting the most of your trophies that much easier. Most notably, the Infinite Rocket Launcher, among a few other important ones. However, you'll quickly notice that the Infinite Rocket Launcher is by far the most expensive thing in the shop, and it requires points to purchase, which can only be earned by completing the in-game challenges in the Records menu. Now, the easiest and quickest way to get the Rocket Launcher as fast as possible is going to be the Weapon Kill Records. If you get a specific amount of kills with each weapon in the game, you'll earn more than enough points. However, back to what I was saying earlier, there are some great parts throughout the game where you could load up a save file and conveniently rack up a ton of kills very quickly. The most important place you're going to want to save is going to be during the zombie siege when you're playing as Carlos. This spot offers the most enemies in the game as well as an opportunity to take them out very quickly and within quick succession. Using this method, you can complete all records for your handgun, your assault rifle, as well as the general kill records very efficiently. On a side note, you don't have to worry about saving after getting all the kills. The game will always remember and keep track of your progress. Even if you load your file to a time before you got those kills, you'll still have them, they'll still count. A good spot I like to use for the grenade launcher and the shotgun kill records was as soon as you regain control of Jill just before the Nemesis Stage 2 boss fight. There's a great spot where you could kill 6 zombies in quick succession and then reload your file to put yourself just before them once again giving you the opportunity to spam kill them over and over. Lastly, you'll need kills for your Magnum and the spot I recommend grinding for this weapon is just after you arrive at Nest 2 during the ass end of the game. There's quite a few zombies around this area, all very close to each other, and they all die in one hit from your magnum, so it makes racking up the kills relatively quick. Just make sure you save beforehand, and then go ahead and kill them over and over again. Now, the way the rest of this video is going to play out is going to be showing you where each and every trophy relevant collectible in the game is, and how to attain them in the order they become accessible to you. I'll also be including tips on how to get all the miscellaneous trophies in the order that they become available as well, so be mindful of those. Once all of those are out of the way, the rest of the video will be dedicated to strategizing on how best to plan your future playthroughs leading up to Inferno difficulty and showing you the best ways on how to do so in order to best manage your time and energy. There are several playthroughs you'll have to complete in this game before you can platinum, so I'm going to help you out with those as best I can. Lastly, if you want to skip to any specific trophy or collectible, feel free to use the timestamp navigation tool in the description to get help as quickly as possible. Now with that out of the way, I'm going to have to fill the void with my own creative commentary until all the collectibles are out of the way. So what you doing? Hi everybody! Alright, so thankfully for me, there's not... 
too many collectibles in this game because hey, my god the, the 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 specifically the last path to platinum i just recorded not that long ago which was for doom eternal oh my god that game had more collectibles than any game i've ever played ever and that the video was so fucking long because of it so this game in comparison my god uh you know what a uh what a hail mary cuz man i i was so happy that this game didn't go ape shit on the fucking collectibles i was very thankful for that um there is a very uh, a very wholesome amount of collectibles in this game. I was A-OK -okay with the amount. It didn't feel like too much. Uh, and it wasn't too strenuous. Um, but, uh, yeah, so all we really have to worry about is the, the... There's all the files. There's the Charlie dolls. There's the, um... The locks. For, uh, like, lock picking and opening the safes and shit. Uh, and I think there was... One other collectible type that I'm forgetting. Oh, right, the weapons. Right, so there's um, there's a bunch of weapons in the game. Uh, I think there's like seven or eight in total, but there's uh, only four that are optional. So most of the weapons in the game, you, you just get automatically, like once you get to a certain point in the game. And like, for example, when you start as Carlos and he starts with an assault rifle, that just counts as you getting the assault rifle. So... And, you know, actually, on that note, I'm not going to include any, um, campaign- Or anything in the story mode that, uh, is, like, forced on you. I'm only showing you all the optional shit. Shit that can be missed, because that's the whole fucking point of the video, right? So, um, yeah, just all the optional stuff. So, I'm only showing the optional weapons, the only ones you can miss, uh, which is four. And, uh, obviously you can miss all the Charlie dolls. As you can see right now, the, um... The doll I was shooting at actually wasn't there in the footage. And the reason for that was because, as you can see, there's a uh, big-ass infinite rocket launcher on my back. Because I saved all the collectibles for, um, like, it was the last thing I had to do in the game. I had already done everything except Inferno difficulty. I got every other trophy in the game except for the Inferno trophies, which were to beat Inferno, get an S rank on Inferno, and uh, get an S rank in general. Uh, those were the last three trophies I needed, and I was just saving them all for the Inferno run, because you get them all by doing the Inferno run, so why not? But, um, yeah, so that being said, uh, the, I guess the second last thing I had to do was get all the collectibles, so, uh, I was missing one document or file, and I was missing, um, some Charlie dolls, but, uh, I was trying to save all the dolls, for when I was ready to actually, like, go and run through the game and record me getting everything. Which is what you're seeing now. Uh, but unfortunately there were some Charlie dolls that I accidentally destroyed. Um, again, looking at you, Mr. Rocket Launcher, uh, I'll go, I'll go and shoot the fucking thing and it'll unintentionally, uh, annihilate one of the Charlie dolls in the room. That happened for quite a few of the Charlie dolls, so pretty much all the ones that... All the Charlie dolls you see me, like, show off, but I don't actually shoot it. That's essentially what happened. I fired the rocket launcher and accidentally destroyed it. Um, and, you know, when you get, much like all the records in this game, when you get a Charlie doll, the, the game's like, permanently, you got it, and you'll never see his ass again. Like, once you get a Charlie doll, that's it. You'll, you can't actually see it very well because the text is blocking it, but... You'll notice it auto-saves in the top left corner of the screen every time you get a Charlie doll. And that's the same with um, every record in the game. Like, if you actually go in the records menu, um, everything that you can get in there is, like, permanent. So, like, that also goes with enemy kills, for example. So, like, you'll notice all the records that tell you to get, um, like, 400 kills with the assault rifle, for example. Every single kill is, like, permanently gotten. Even if you were to load your file to, uh, to a time before you got the kill, the game remembers everything you do at all times, except for um, saving actual game progress. Every everything else is recorded permanently, so everything you do, you can't take back, essentially. But um, not that that's a problem, but I just thought it was an I interesting thing about this game. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm not showing... 
Uh, there's two lockpicks in the game that are mandatory. Like, you have to open them for, um, like, story purposes. Like, in order to advance the fucking story. So, uh, I'm not showing those ones, obviously. Like I said, only optional stuff. But, uh... Yeah, that's, that's the plan. And, uh... You know... Oh, here we go. So, this is the trophy for getting all the jewels. I'm gonna show... Uh, they're all in these fancy boxes. And, uh, actually, I should talk more about what you're seeing here, because there's actually an important piece of information that I should include, which is, uh, once you get the lockpick to get into the substation and turn on the, the power, and you gotta flip the switches and dodge all the bugs, and it's a total thing, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> but, uh, it, it's not. Also, um... Yeah, so once you get the lockpick, I would highly advise that you don't turn on the power in the substation once you have the lockpick. Because once you get the lockpick, you can actually get in there. Hence one of the mandatory doors that you have to open to advance the story. Like I was talking about like two seconds ago. And um, yeah, I would highly advise that you backtrack back to the main city area here, which you see me standing in now. I would highly advise that you come back to this area once you have the lockpick. Like, immediately turn around once you physically picked it up and come back here and uh, get everything. The reason why I highly recommend that you do that is because when I was actually first playing this game, I, um, as soon as I got the block pick, I was like, okay, so I have two options here. I can either backtrack and get everything now, or I can wait until the game inevitably forces me to go back in order to advance the story. And I, I thought about it for a second, and I was like, wait, wait a minute, I know what they're gonna do, they're gonna make Nemesis jump out of nowhere, and come and try and fuck you up. Which, obviously happens, so, uh, I, I foresaw that outcome, with my mad gamer skills, and, uh, thankfully I was able to avoid that, because I backtracked immediately, and I would highly recommend that you guys do the same thing. Because having Nemesis chase you around while you're trying to gather all this shit is, like, super annoying. And he's unkillable. You can only, um... You can damage him a set amount to a point where he, like, becomes stunned for a very long time. And he'll even drop items for you. Uh, he drops a couple weapon mods, which you have to get right now before you advance the story. Like, once you go back to the subway where Carlos is, you miss the weapon mods that he can give you, so if you want those, you have to get them now. Um, but, you know, just to avoid, because, like I said, you can't kill him, so uh, even if you stun him and he drops an item for you and whatnot, uh, he's eventually going to get back up and start chasing you again, so uh, I imagine that'd be really annoying <laughs> when trying to get everything, so I would highly recommend you come back and do it now! Uh, you know, it kind of sucks that you have to backtrack and waste a little bit of time, but, I mean, it's gotta get done, and it might as well be done in the, uh, least stressful manner, so. That's my recommendation to you, but, obviously, uh, it's your playthrough, so play it however the fuck you want. But, uh, you'd be pretty fucking stupid in my book if you were to do it that way. But, uh, so take my advice, I'm the guide maker. And what I say goes. That's why you clicked on the video. Let's let's not kid ourselves, huh? But um, yeah. So uh, but you know what? I'm actually gonna talk a bit. You know, to fill the void of uh, no commentary, I'm going to talk about my opinion of this game because apparently, a lot of people are. I'm surprised anyway at how many people are uh, causing an uproar about this game. And, uh, there's a lot of people voicing how disappointed they are. Yeah, so right here, um, this is the first time, once you finish turning on the power at the substation, this is where Nemesis first appears, you can bust it out of the wall. Uh, one grenade on assisted difficulty will automatically stun him. There is a trophy to damage him and make him drop an item, so that's what I'm showing you right now. And that weapon mod, or rather that case I just picked up, has the first weapon mod in it. And you can see in the fine print, I wrote, do this again at after the scene at the donut shop for a second mod. Now, the scene I'm referring to is when you're on your way back from planning a route at the subway. Uh, Carlos will call you up and 
tell you what you have to do. Um, once you're coming back from doing that, you'll see a cutscene of Nemesis uh, grabbing a zombie's face, and he he starts turning them into the uh, Plagueis-esque enemies from that are very uh, reminiscent of RE4. Uh, you know, the, they got the tentacles on their hand and whatnot. Uh, yeah, so, once you see the cutscene of him making that enemy, and then you start seeing that enemy from that point forward, that scene, you have to, you have to damage him again there, so just throw another grenade. Um, there's, you could get, I believe, four grenades in total before that moment, if you didn't miss any of them. But, um... Yeah, so just throw another one, and then he'll drop the second weapon mod, which is actually a damage upgrade for your handgun, so you're probably gonna want it. But, uh, yeah, if you don't do that there, you permanently miss it. So, like, even if you wait as long as, um, because this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to wait to get it until he, he chases you, uh, just after you get back to the subway. Because there's that part where you have to, uh... Uh, bust open the vent in order to escape him uh, just before you enter the sewers here that you're seeing now and I thought I could just damage him there because there's a red barrel in that room just before you break open the vent and I was like oh that'd be the perfect spot and I wouldn't have to use a grenade so that I could keep the grenade and use it later but if you wait even that long he won't drop it anymore so it's a highly missable we uh, yeah highly missable weapon mod that you have to get at that exact moment, and it's a very small uh, window for you to be able to get it. But um, this is me warning you, so don't fuck it up if you want all the weapon mods. Now, I'm not showing me getting all the weapon mods because it's not a trophy. But uh, I imagine you guys would want it anyway because the weapon mods are fun. So I'm telling you how to get it. But anyways, um, yeah, so back to what I was saying earlier about my opinion on this game. Uh, yeah, I, I thought this game was fucking fantastic, and I'm, I'm just really surprised how many people are, uh, you know, voicing their uh, negativity about it, and they thought it wasn't very well received, so I just thought that was very surprising. I thought this game was uh, almost as good as RE2 Remake. I'm slightly more partial to RE2 Remake. I think it was just slightly more well done. You can tell that... This game felt a little rushed. It has a lot less um, content than RE2. Like, RE2 had way more detail put into it. But I think that's because they were different games. I don't necessarily think that that's Resident Evil 3's fault that it feels like there's less content. I just think that um, because RE2 had the whole, you know, uh, tons of different scenarios where you're playing as uh, Leon or Claire and they each have their own alternate routes so there's like tons of different ways you could play that game uh, that's a that's a thing about what makes RE2 RE2 you know that's its own unique thing um, whereas RE3 didn't really have that uh, you know so it's they're just focusing on the main story um, by the way yeah I'm showing you how, uh, killing Brad right now because you can miss this uh, now the game goes out of its way to make sure you don't miss it, because if you actually don't kill Brad here, he does respawn again once you're inside the police station, so the, the game throws a couple opportunities at you to kill him, and uh, he does drop a unique key item, he drops a key card, which you need in order to open the storage units inside the uh, police station, and there is a unique weapon mod for Carlos's assault rifle, in the police station it's uh, a reticle upgrade and i recommend it because the the default reticle on the assault rifle sucks shit um and i don't like it so the the uh the upgrade definitely makes it more appealing but uh yeah so i you know it's not a trophy but i would recommend doing it but uh yeah i actually missed brad on my first playthrough interestingly enough i i was very confused by him. It, it totally threw me for a loop. I was amazed that I missed him. I, I really was, because uh, when I, I did my first playthrough on standard difficulty, and I started attacking him, and uh, I was I was doing my knife trick with Carlos, which is, uh, I picked up on it right away, 
for some reason, but um, instead of, uh, for example, when you when you go for the action dodge with Jill, uh, which is one of the shoulder buttons, it's the like dodge mechanic in order to dodge enemy attacks. Carlos's is a little different. It doesn't work the same. Jill's is just a straight up dodge, and the only purpose it serves is to avoid damage. But Carlos's, uh, it's not necessarily a dodge, it's a body check. And if you perfect time it, much like how when you perfect time Jill's, you can go into a slow motion sort of uh, action sequence where you're allowed to shoot immediately after dodging. That's Jill's unique attribute from her dodge. Carlos's is, is that he, uh, you get this awesome fucking haymaker punch that just comes out if you perfect time it and you'll blast the enemy across the room, which is fucking hilarious. Uh, very, very Chris Redfield-like in, uh, in execution. But, um, yeah, it's awesome. But, uh, if you don't, if you just do the regular body check, like, without perfect timing it to get the punch, you can actually, um, infinite loop zombies. And it, it's a nice little trick if you want to conserve ammo like me. I'm a hoarder. If you guys know anything about watching my, uh, live streams on my regular playthroughs of this game, I like to hoard everything when I play these games. I hoard ammo, health, whatever you could think of. I try to be... Um, as perfect as I can with conserving my resources. And so that being said, I pick up I pick up quick on techniques like that. So um, what you could do with Carlos is when you've downed an enemy and uh, a zombie's trying to like stand back up, which he will slowly try to do, uh, while he's in the process of that, you can do the body check with Carlos and it'll knock his ass back down to the floor. And it, it'll essentially reset his position so what you can do is you could just pull out your knife knife him two or three times and then check him as he's getting up and then he's knocked down again and then you just rinse and repeat so you can essentially oh before i forget this collectible the file's right there on my left you see me run right past it pick it up it's it that's a file um totally forgot to pick it up when i was recording that is a file though I, the reason I didn't pick it up is because I didn't think it was a file. Uh, when you click on it, it's a picture. But it actually does count as a file in the game. So if you don't pick that up, you won't get the trophy for picking up all the files. So make sure you fucking pick that up. Now, don't be like me. But, um... Yeah, so anyways, that's a cool little neat trick you can do with Carlos. Um... And, uh, I totally forgot what the point of even talking about that was. But, hey, it's a tip, and you're welcome. There's another, uh, Charlie doll that I accidentally blew up with my rocket launcher. You're welcome. Oh, actually, uh, speaking of this area, beautiful area, by the way. I love this room. This is probably my, visually, my favorite room in the game, because it just looks amazing. But, um... Yeah, they, they didn't include the, uh, the the entire Clock Tower section from the original Resident Evil 3 on the PS1. They cut that section out entirely in the remake. Now, I don't know about that. Like, the thing is, the remake is so fucking short already, you could have definitely included it. Like, this game, like, RE2 Remake was short. And I always thought, you know, I gave RE2 Remake a pass on that. Because RE2 Remake cut out some stuff too. Mind you, very minor stuff, but they did cut out stuff from the original. Uh, ultimately making the game shorter. And you could feel it when you were playing it, uh, compared to the original. But, um... I, I always gave RE2 a pass on that, because... My thought process was, well, yeah, they made the game shorter, but... Uh, there's so many different routes. You got, like, two routes each with Leon and Claire. Uh, so there's there's lots of uh, replay value there But with re3 that's not necessarily the case you can only do the same run over and over uh, that doesn't uh, that isn't very different each time through and uh, Fucking uh, where the hell was I going with that you can um God I suck what the hell and this game can be beaten, uh, well, the, both RE2 and RE3 can be beaten in a, around roughly the same amount of time, uh, professionally, like, if you watch professional speedruns. So they're about the same length in that regard, but RE3 is still slightly shorter. 
Um, so I, f I feel like you absolutely could have made up for that. Like I, like I was saying with RE2 Remake, you know, I get, like I said, I gave them a pass because you play as two different characters and they have different sections. So I was like, alright, like, that's, that's enough content right there. So I'm okay, I give them a pass. But with this game, they should have included the Clock Tower, man. That would have been awesome. Uh, I will agree with people on that, that that is a negative about the remake. But honestly, aside from that... This game is fucking awesome. I loved it. I was thoroughly impressed. I very much enjoyed my time with this game. Uh, even this area we're in right now, the hospital, was fantastic. It was so atmospheric. Uh, especially if you actually take the time to read all the files and shit. Which I highly recommend you do if you uh, enjoy the story of Resident Evil. It really adds to the, to the lore and makes you feel like you're in the world, you know? That's something a lot of people don't do. Like, if you only play the Resident Evil games just as is, and you don't, and you just blast through the game, and you don't read the the lore or pick up on the subtle hints and shit in your environment, you miss a lot of the experience. It's true, and uh, I feel like so much of Resident Evil games storytelling isn't necessarily through its dialogue, um, you know, or cutscenes. It's it's also a big part of it is like creating the world around them and i feel like the files add a big part of that so you know uh goes to show you read the fucking files all right you you won't regret it resident evil has a fantastic storyline a uh, big reason why i've always loved these games but um but uh yeah this th this area was a lot of fun i very much enjoyed it and oh my god, let's talk about Carlos. Carlos, holy shit, did he get an upgrade or what? I didn't give a flying fuck about this character in the original. I actually hated him. Uh, well, maybe hate's a strong word, but I didn't have any liking towards him whatsoever. Uh, whenever, whenever I had to play as him, I was essentially saying, Let me play as Jill again, I don't want to play as this piece of shit. Um... <laughs> But in this game, he's so fucking lovable. Like, what an upgrade. I can't believe how much uh, this game, the remake, made me love Carlos. Whereas, again, originally, I didn't care about him whatsoever. And now, you know, because this is a remake, and uh, Capcom loves to ditch their characters that they introduce to the Resident Evil franchise, we're probably never gonna see Carlos again. And so we really will be left in a cruel... Carlosless world, which will suck, but, uh, you know, hof hopefully they don't forget these characters entirely, like, hopefully they're still included in some capacity, like, for example, it'd be awesome to get Carlos as a playable character in Resistance, I mean, it's something, Resistance is fun, by the way, if you guys haven't played it, it's actually a really well done, ulti uh, yeah, multiplayer mode, and it is fun, I would recommend it, uh, the online's kind of shit, though, the uh, matchmaking and constantly disconnecting from matches and the peer-to-peer -peer online connection and it causes you to lag a lot and so you could have some you could definitely have a terrible time with it uh, which is honestly I'm not surprised at all um, didn't expect the online to be perfect in any sort of capacity because it was just kind of thrown in with Resident Evil 3 but hey you can't uh, you can't fault them for uh, for doing that because man was that brilliant marketing including resident uh, resident evil resistance with re3 remake can you imagine if they sold them separately i guarantee you uh resistance sales would have been a joke especially after uh umbrella core my god what a garbage game but uh, and it could have been amazing but it was off and they've been fucking up a lot on the multiplayer lately uh even in uh Operation Raccoon City had fucking multiplayer, and it was terrible. It was so broken. I remember the knife in that game was ridiculous. You could literally uh, infinite knife combo someone to oblivion, and they you can't get out of it. There was nothing you could do. If someone started knifing you, that was it until you were dead, and you couldn't do anything about it. It was crazy. Stuff like that, yeah, a lot of fun. Last time I had fun on a Resident Evil multiplayer was RE5. I actually really liked uh, Versus Mode. In Resident Evil 5, I played that for quite a long time. I logged in a decent amount of hours on that mode. Uh, I thought it was a lot of fun, even though that was broken too. I still had a lot of fun with it. But they haven't quite nailed 
online in Resident Evil since then. And even then, that's up for debate. Uh, next trophy here, Electric Slide. Now, um, think about this trophy. So I'm going to show you guys how to get it right now. So the, uh, right there, when you see the fuse box blow out, and then the lights turn off, that's when the clock officially starts ticking. So in order to get the trophy, you have to gather all the fuses in the warehouse within five minutes. Now, the description for this trophy is slightly misleading because it makes it sound like all you have to do is just pick up the fuses, but that's not true. You have to pick up all the fuses and put them where they're supposed to be. And until then, you know, you're not going to get the trophy. So you do actually have to run the entire gauntlet, not just pick them up. Uh, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that right now, so just, you know, pay attention. But, uh, you got to be quick here. Um, shoot the dog literally as soon as Jill's uh, stun animation finishes. Uh, otherwise, he's going to bite your ass. You literally have to be as quick as possible there, otherwise you're getting hit. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, during this run, I am going to show where the next Charlie doll is, because it is along the run, so... This is where the next Charlie doll is. I just decided to grab it while I was doing it because I didn't want to come back and re-record it, so fuck that. There it is. Now back to the trophy, focusing on doing this quickly. Um, it's very easy. It's uh, This part is intimidating as hell first time you go through it, but the, the more you do it, like the more I played this section, I was like, wow, this could have been way harder. Especially this part coming up right now. It's uh, kind of a joke. You drop down the ladder, uh, first box opens, there's like six, seven zombies in there. None of them can even come close to hitting you, as long as you're quick enough. And then in the next one, the gamma busts out, and you could just get to the ladder before he's even a problem. So, like, this, this could have been designed way better in order to fuck you over, but it ended up being super easy to get around. It, it really makes you wonder, like how the whole playtesting process even happens when when games like this get made like who who playtested this section and said that that was okay you know what i'm saying like why is it okay to have these enemies that you put here uh literally be no threat and you know why are they okay with that why even have the enemies there if you're okay with them never being able to hit you that's what i don't understand like in term, strictly speaking, on like a, on development uh, terms, you know. And then even this hunter, he's very predictable. Uh, as soon as he drops in, he'll pretty much always miss if you uh, just try to blow right past him. Um, and yeah, you you pretty much never have to worry about a single enemy. I'm amazed that that pale head went down in one shotgun shell. That was crazy. Granted, I know I'm on assisted difficulty, but. Still, uh, they are super hard to kill in general. I'm surprised just one bullet took them out. And uh, it's very easy to get hit here. I perfectly, tried to perfectly time the dodge there. <laughs> Did not work. Um, but yeah, once you pop all those suckers in, boom. And then there you go. That was absolutely within five minutes. Uh, you don't actually see the trophy pop here because I already got it prior to that moment, but... Uh, that was definitely within five minutes. Trust. Oh, uh, and uh, showing where the file is. So this is back during uh, the area I just ran through. I didn't want to stop and show the employee memo during the run because I would have had to like stop and show where it was on the map and shit. And now it just begs the question, Matt, you showed the Charlie doll, but you didn't show the document? Why? I don't know. You know what? Your guess is as good as mine. At this point... I'm losing my goddamn mind making these videos. There's 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 no rhyme or reason to anything I do anymore. Not to mention, I'm showing some mandatory to get documents. Like for example, when you click on uh, Nikolai's computer, which you have to do in order to advance the plot, why did I show where that file was? It's not like anyone's gonna miss it. It's literally impossible to miss. But I showed where it was anyway. Sue me! What are you gonna do? Yes, that zombie's alive. I didn't just shoot him for no reason. Uh, yup. But now we're at towards the ass end of the game. We're almost done, baby. We're almost done. But uh, yeah, uh, interestingly enough, this game has a very high platinum rate. Um, t 
tons of people got the platinum in this game. It, it is a very easy trophy list. I do. I understand that. Um, but I am still shocked at how many people have platinum this game uh, over the second game. I feel like I feel like S ranking on Inferno difficulty, even with all the bonus shop stuff. I don't know. Well, I mean, I guess it is easier on paper than S plus ranking on RE2. Yeah, you know what? All right, I get it. Now that I've actually got, ran through Inferno difficulty, I, I understand it. At first, I didn't. I was like, why the fuck do so many people have the platinum in this game? But uh, yeah, this game is pretty fucking easy now that I think about it. The main wor worry is uh, mission. Yeah, jeez, I can't talk. Missing collectibles. But don't worry, we didn't miss shit. I've included everything. So we're not missing shit. There's the last Charlie doll. You're welcome. One of the only trophies you're actually going to see pop in the video. Because that was the last one I needed. And uh, we didn't miss we didn't miss dick, so I'm thankful for that. And then uh, once, once we've wrapped up all these collectibles, we're going to be focusing on uh, strategizing. Let's, let's talk strategy. But, uh, we'll get to that, alright? Hold your horses. But, uh, yeah, this game was very easy to platinum. Uh, even when I was... I thought I was gonna have so much trouble, um, fighting the final boss on Inferno, because he's nuts. Like, now, if, if you're decked out and you've purchased everything in the bonus shop, like all the, uh, iron defense coins, the recovery coins, the, the dodge manual... I don't know how I missed this document, literally. I, I This was probably my fourth or fifth playthrough of the game, the, like the recording you're seeing right now. And it wasn't until then that I got that document. I missed it like four or five times. That was crazy. It was right on the wall in plain sight, and I didn't see it every single time. That, that was nuts. That was the last one I needed, too. I found every, every other one. Crazy. It's crazy how... Um, so many of the files in this game could just literally be in plain sight, but but can be so easily missed. It's because they blend in so well with the fucking environment. Like, even this one you're about to see. This, this is the last file you pick up in the game. You know, on my first playthrough, I missed this. Look how hard it is to see. If you're not actually looking for it, it's very easy to run right past that. It, it's like the same color as the ground. Um, and you know, you got the blood all around it and shit. Crazy. Now that you're familiar with the bonus shop, I can talk about the last few trophies you'll need to get. And first one I'll talk about is going to be the I might need these later trophy, which requires you to complete the game using one or fewer recovery items. Now, technically this trophy is misleading you, and what it's really asking you to do is beat the game without using health at all. But the reason it mentions one or fewer is because there's precisely one specific moment during the game where you're forced to use health, and that moment is when a certain creature decides to have its way with Miss Valentine without her consent, and the only way to recover from it is by using a single green herb. Once you've done that, you can't use any more health during the run. Now, you can make the difficulty of this trophy pretty much non-existent by going into the bonus shop, which you unlock by beating the game, and purchasing the recovery coins and the iron defense coins. Not only will these coins make you virtually impossible to kill, but you will also slowly regenerate health over time if you do manage to take damage, so you pretty much have nothing to fear once you have those coins. This trophy becomes a cakewalk. Either way, it's pretty straightforward, and you have many opportunities to grab this trophy while working towards unlocking Inferno difficulty, so go for it and have fun doing it. Next up, we have the Minimalist Trophy, which requires you to complete the game without ever opening the item box. Now that being said, you may have realized that this run won't allow you to have any sort of assistance from the bonus shop, given the fact that anything in there that would help you is in said item box, which you were expressly forbade to open! To that end, it should go without saying that playing on assisted difficulty is ideal when attempting this trophy for a number of reasons, the obvious one being that it's just overall easier to get through the game, but another major advantage you would have for playing on assisted is the fact that you start with extra inventory space, which is extremely helpful when going for this trophy, as it allows you to hoard more items and have more space for key items as well as anything else you might want to help with your run. 
Honestly, as you can see from the footage, I had plenty of extra shit by the end of the game, so this trophy is far from impossible. It only seems intimidating. The only other piece of advice I can give is to never be afraid to pick up as much health and ammo as you want. Even if you fill up your inventory, you could discard health or ammo at any time. So having a ton of it doesn't really matter all that much. Use your best judgment and you'll have no trouble with this trophy. Now the last thing you're going to have to do in the game is complete Inferno difficulty. And by going for the S rank in Inferno difficulty, you're going to actually grab yourself all the trophies that you would have left missing otherwise. So don't worry about all the rest of the trophies in the game. By the time you complete this last and final playthrough, you will have gotten every single trophy in the game. So no worries there. Now Inferno is by far the most intimidating and most difficult thing in this game. Uh, mainly, there's only two things you really want to worry about during Inferno Run, which is the beginning of the game and the very end of the game, like literally the beginning and end. The reason why the beginning is scary is because you're running through the city and you don't have access to anything from the bonus shop until you get to the first item box. That being said, it's pretty scary to avoid all the zombies along the way, however, this is literally just going to be trial and error. Now, if you do manage to get hit by a zombie, you are going to die in one hit on Inferno. Without the coins from the bonus shop, you will get one-shotted and there is nothing you can do about it. So you are unfortunately going to have to work towards getting good at dodging without the combat field manual and dodge your way past those zombies until you get to the first item box. Like I said, there's no avoiding this, so you're going to have to work on it. However, it's honestly not that difficult and I ended up doing it on my second try, so I'm sure you guys could get it too. Once you've actually gotten to the first item box and you can grab all your bonus shop content like the infinite rocket launcher, the coins, the field combat manual, and what have you, then the rest of the game is cakewalk. It's still just as easy as all your other playthroughs, to be honest. Uh, you won't get one-shotted by enemies anymore once you have the coins, and you will one-shot everything thanks to the rocket launcher. Everything's going to be super easy, just to, like all your other playthroughs. The only thing that'll be difficult will be the final boss in the game. Now the reason why this battle is so hard is because Nemesis in his final stage becomes a beast on Inferno difficulty. He's attacking you almost constantly, leaving you no time to do anything, and he recovers and generates from attacks very quickly. He can also do these really bullshit combos and just combo you into oblivion before you ever have a chance to get up and heal or recover yourself. The only real consistent way to deal with this boss is to actually just get good at dodging his attacks. Unfortunately, there is no avoiding this. You are going to have to take time to trial and error it and learn all of his attack patterns and tendencies, and there's no getting around it. This is by far going to be the most annoying thing you'll have to do throughout the entire game, but it's actually not that bad. I managed to almost do it on my second try, and I would have gotten away with it too if I didn't greet out so hard and just run to the railgun hoping and praying that he wouldn't hit me. But of course he did because I'm stupid. So don't be like me. Uh, this definitely took me under 10 tries. So it's honestly not that bad, especially if you have the rocket launcher. What's great about the rocket launcher is that you can fire a shot and have it be so goddamn efficient that you could take out like literally five, six of those sacks all over him in one shot. The explosion radius on the rocket launcher is just immensely powerful. And you can honestly down him within two shots if they are very well placed shots. Now, each it's important to note that each time you down Nemesis, you only have exactly enough time to push in one of the power cores. Don't get greedy and try for multiple power cores at once. You will literally only have time for one, and you gotta be quick. If you delay at all after you down him, his ass is getting up and knocking you on your ass. So you're gonna wanna be really careful with that, and always make sure that before you down Nemesis and land that final shot, you wanna be standing relatively right next to the power core, so that you can immediately start pushing it in. Once all the power cores are punched in, you gotta watch Nemesis carefully, and don't let him tag you on your way to the railgun. That's how I got fucked, and you just need to be very aware of that. But once you've handled that, it's no problem, and he'll be as good as dead. Now, ultimately, I wish you guys the best of luck with this. It is by far the scariest thing to do throughout the entire game, but like I said, it's very doable, so don't let it intimidate you guys too much.
Now, important note to mention about actually getting the S rank for Inferno. There are two requirements. There's only two stipulations that you need to follow. Uh, one is that you have to complete the game within two hours. Now, this is very easy to do if you're using the Infinite Rocket Launcher and all the bonuses from the shop. Uh, you can easily do this. That That is a very generous time frame. Uh, my run, personally, was only a few minutes over an hour. And uh, even that could have been done quicker. So they, they give you almost an hour extra to actually meet the quota. So there's really no worries there. You can easily blast through the game in an hour. There's no problem. Um, but the, the main thing you want to worry about is uh, the saves. Because you can only save a maximum of five times during Inferno difficulty. So if you save more than that, your ass ain't getting the S rank. So... Just don't go crazy on the saves, obviously plan out your saves, um, but it is very, very doable to only, you could, I mean, you could only save like twice and, and it'd be okay. The only real save that's very important is the one that is immediately right before the final boss. That is the literally the only save in the game that matters. Every other save doesn't matter, because once, once you have the infinite rocket launcher, the whole game is just a breeze, so... Um, you can honestly, like, I don't really have a recommended saves per se. Uh, if I had to really recommend one, I guess it would be, um, before Nemesis first shows up would be a good one. Like, right after you finish the, uh, the substation and turning on the power. Uh, I would say that that would be a good spot to save. Or maybe even, uh, before... The first actual boss fight with Nemesis when he's on the rooftop with the flamethrower that'd be a good spot too and then after that it just really doesn't matter like you got two extra saves and like I said you could get through the game in an hour no problem so it's really just a matter of like where you want to save but either way uh, very very doable with the rocket launcher like I said the only hardest thing to do is actually beating the final boss now, before the end of the video, if you guys enjoyed or this video helped you guys out, I'd really appreciate it if you would leave a like and subscribe to my channel, as it really helps support me and makes bringing you these guides possible. I'm just going to keep that short. I feel like I've gotten my point across. However, typically when I make these videos, I usually rate the trophy list. So that being said, I'm going to give this game a 4 out of 10. I think that's a pretty good rank. I, honestly, I think the rank should have been lower. But uh, literally, the only difficult thing to do in this game is beating the final boss, Nemesis Stage 3, uh, on Inferno difficulty, actually being able to dodge him and, you know, actually have to trial and error, learn his, his fight patterns and, and skillfully dodge him in order to survive. That is easily the hardest thing to do in the game, but even that is very doable, so I'd say a 4 out of 10 is a pretty good placement and like like I said the rest of the game is very cakewalk very easy uh, and I can understand why so many people have the platinum already but hey you want to know where the collectibles are I showed you so that's the main thing that's the I imagine that's gonna be the main reason people will click on this video so you're welcome but that being said that's probably gonna be it for me so have a good one everybody I truly hope you guys enjoyed the video take it easy and I will definitely see you in the next one, so take care, guys.